to make something that brought the viewer in, that had a degree of beauty, so that they would look at the plates and then go, oh, that's what they're about. Each of these plates represents the final meal of a prisoner on death row. Julie Green was teaching art in Oklahoma when the idea came to her while reading the paper over breakfast. In Oklahoma at that time, there were many executions, highest per capita in the United States, still is. And so I just started saving these clippings. They bothered me. Oklahoma, 8 July. 1999, six tacos, six glazed donuts, and a cherry Coke. Texas, 22 October 2001, a bag of Jolly Ranchers. The project, as you can tell, has many different shapes of plates. They're all basically white or off-white. Most are porcelain, some are stoneware. Um, different sizes, they're almost all secondhand. When Martha Stewart was in prison, I did go to Kmart and buy uh, a Martha Stewart plate um, that I happened to notice. I wanted them all to be basically white, look uniform, look like a system, but not a matched set because they represent individuals. This is a Florida plate and for lobster, shrimp, baked potato, cheesecake, uh, and a drink. And the information came back. Um, he enjoyed his last meal, ate every bite. This is a North Carolina plate one honey bun. When you walk into the gallery, it's this beautiful display of plates. It's almost homey. And uh, then the content is just a, a big flip. This is an Indiana plate and the words mother on the front from 2001. German ravioli and chicken dumplings prepared by his mother and prison dietary staff. So his mother actually receive clearance to come into the prison kitchen and cook that meal. Julie's work draws from an approach to art in Mexico called retablo. Retablo in Mexican painting is like remembrance of something that will otherwise go unnoticed. These are um, Mississippi menus, 23 July, 1947, same, fried chicken, watermelon. He was only 16, he was only 15. There were two boys quickly convicted of murder. And executed by a traveling electric chair the next day. A traveling electric chair. I ordered those special from the China painting catalog because they were appropriate for those two meals. Because they were so young? Yeah, because they were so young. They're very small plates. They're, they're palm of the hand size. This is an Indiana plate and the information from the Department of Corrections came back. He never had a birthday cake, so we ordered a birthday cake for him. It's very important. It is important uh, in a sense that it fulfills one of art's roles. There are many, but it makes us stand still and think. Think about something we don't really want to think about. Texas represents a third of all the plates, about a third of all the plates in the show, and these five Texas plates um, consecutive in fall of 2007, had no final meal request, had no final meal request, had no final meal request. This tells me that the inmates are aware of what other inmates are eating or not eating. The variety of the plates also reflect the different ways the states implement the death penalty. Oklahoma dropped its final meal allowance from $20 to 15 this plate represents the last final meal request granted in Texas. When the prisoner returned his meal untouched, the state stopped the practice. In many states are limited to what's on hand in the prison pantry. So you can really tell, like in Oklahoma, you get restaurant meals, same with California. And so those are more varied. This is an Oregon plate. Um, the request is five eggs sunny side up. Um, it's a breakfast meal, pancakes. And the request closed with, I would appreciate the eggs hot. One plate centers around pecan pie. An Arkansas inmate with brain damage ate half before his execution, thinking he could eat the other half after the execution was over. He didn't understand. He didn't understand. Yeah. There is misery in this whole process from the crime that was committed. 
somebody was generally murdered. So there was victims, victims' family, so many levels of suffering. Part of my motivation for the project is that it generates conversation on our system of capital punishment. And, and it has done that to a far greater degree than I would have ever expected. The Last Supper depicts the most humane moment in a long chain of misery that starts and ends with death. By focusing on the mundane, limited choices of food, by putting them on grandma's china, and by staying true to the individual details of each meal, Julie Green hopes her art will cause more and more people to notice. It's one of the many reasons why she's still painting plates. I paint 50 a year. It's my plan to keep doing that um, until we don't have capital punishment anymore. Everybody has an opinion about capital punishment, actually, it seems like. And even my mom. It's changed my mom. So I figure, you know, right, I can't, I can't go about like trying to change people on capital punishment. But if it happens, um, that's fabulous.